This video will discuss the chemical potential in statistical mechanics. So looking at our results that we have from thermodynamics or from statistical mechanics thus far, we saw that the energy levels accessible to a given molecule is equal to the energy of translation plus the energy of rotation plus the energy of vibration plus the energy of its electronic state. So for our partition function of the molecule, that's equal to a product of the partition function of its translational motion times the partition function of its rotational motion times the partition function of vibrations times the partition function of its electronic state. The partition function is also defined as a sum over all the individual energy states of a molecule of the Boltzmann factor of that state, e to the minus beta ei, where beta is 1 over the Boltzmann constant times the temperature of the system. We also saw from those videos that we derived the internal energy of the system is equal to the average energy from statistical mechanics, which is equal to the partial derivative of the natural log of the partition function with respect to beta 1 over kt and that's at constant number of particles and constant volume. This is also equal to if you do the uh, chain rule and calculate it as a derivative in terms of t instead of beta, you get kt squared times d log q dt at constant n and v. All right, so that was the internal energy. What we want to look at in this video is calculating the chemical potential of a substance from statistical mechanics. So we discussed in the previous videos on phase transitions and phase diagrams that, chemical, that uh, species flow from phases with high chemical potential to phases with low chemical potential. And we measure, mentioned what the relative Gibbs energy of these phases had to be at various parts in the phase diagram, but we never said what the absolute value of those uh, Gibbs energies were. And the chemical potential is defined as the partial derivative of the Gibbs energy with respect to the number of moles of that particle. And that's at constant pressure and constant temperature, which are the uh, variables that the chemical potential depends on. So if we translate this in terms of partition functions, what you can do is get the following result that the chemical potential is minus Boltzmann constant times temperature, or minus 1 over beta, d log q dn, where n is the number of moles of the substance, and that is at constant pressure and temperature. So we'll also remind ourselves that we derived these molecular partition functions for a system of n independent molecules for translations, rotations, vibrations, and electronic degrees of freedom. For translations, it was volume to the n over n factorial, where n is the number of particles, times 2 pi mkt over h squared to the 3n over 2, where m is the mass of an individual molecule, and h is Planck's constant. For rotations, if your temperature is sufficiently above the rotational temperatures, the partition function was t over sigma theta rot to the n, where sigma is the symmetry number, which is one for homonuclear diatomics, two for hetero sorry, two for homonuclear diatomics, one for heteronuclear diatomics, and this theta rot is a rotational temperature which you can look up in tables for various molecules. For a nonlinear polyatomic, you have three different rotational temperatures, theta A, B, and C. Again, those values you can look up in tables. I think this sigma should also be to the n. Throw that into the end there. Now let's make that look more like it's the power than next to it. Okay, that's better. All right, and then for vibrations, we have for each individual vibrational mode, the vibrational partition function is e to the minus vibrational temperature over 2t over 1 minus e to the minus vibrational temperature over t. There's a 2 here, there is not down there. And then you do that and multiply them together for each vibrational mode. For a nonlinear polyatomic, you have 3n minus 6 vibrational modes. For a linear polyatomic, you have 3n minus 5. And then that all gets taken to the power of the number of particles. 
The electronic degrees of freedom, you have the degeneracy of the ground state, singlet, doublet, triplet, etc., times e to the dissociation energy over Boltzmann constant times temperature, all of that to the n. All right, so uh, just as with many other quantities, the chemical potential of a molecule is equal to its translational plus rotational plus vibrational plus electronic chemical potentials. Then we can do some uh, voodoo here in terms of uh, n and big N. So little n is in terms of moles and big N in terms of number of particles. It's much more convenient for us to work with number of particles here, so let's do some translating here. Number of moles is number of particles over Avogadro's number. The partial derivative with respect to moles is equal to the partial derivative of number of particles with respect to uh, Avogadro's number. Uh, the partial derivative of the number of particles with respect to the number of moles times the partial derivative with respect to the number of particles, which is equal to Na times N over with respect to n times ddn, which is Avogadro's number times the partial derivative with respect to number of particles. Similarly, nk, number of particles times Boltzmann constant equals number of moles times the gas constant. So n times nr over na uh, is going to give us that, that quantity there. And Avogadro's number times the Boltzmann constant is equal to the gas constant. So that's all just uh, foreshadowing for the results that I have boxed here, that when you do these uh, derivatives, make these substitutions on these partition functions, the result you'll get is that the translational chemical potential of a molecule is equal to minus RT times 1 plus log volume over number of particles plus 3 halves log 2 pi mkt over h squared. The rotational chemical potential is minus RT log T over sigma theta rot. The vibrational chemical potential is a sum over all of the individual modes of one half R vibrational temperature. Again, all these vibrational temperatures are things that can be looked up from tables. Minus RT log one minus E to the minus vibrational temperature over T. And the electronic chemical potential is minus dissociation energy minus RT times the natural log of the degeneracy of our ground state. So uh, this is just all to say that the chemical potential that we have, which it looks very abstract, is actually something that has a numerical value. And statistical mechanics, just as it can be used for any other thermodynamic quantity, can be used to compute the absolute value of that uh, of that thermodynamic quantity and for a if we know the various properties of a molecule like its rotational and vibrational temperatures its dissociation energy its mass its volume etc then we can actually compute what that chemical potential is and assign a numerical value to it